Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really well. Purpose of life and purpose of everything. Sorry, sorry, I blacked out. The purpose of this video is to give a review of free code camp and I have no affiliation. This should be an objective, unbiased review, but it was just a frequently asked comment. I think three or four or five people asked in the comment what I thought of free code camp. So I'm gonna make a video about it. So we'll do a review of freecodecamp.com and then we'll just talk a little bit more about learning, teaching, and talk about that just like we always do. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it first high level overview of the video but I thought of six I thought of six major points that I want to talk about regarding free code camp four of them are pros two of them are cons but we can't say all good things and we can't say all bad things so first let's get straight into the good stuff I think my overall if you don't want to watch this my overall score for free code camp is going to be a 92 so a solid a minus Let's just run through these. First thing that can't be understated, the number one thing that differentiates this from everything else is that it's free. So every single medium of learning in the current world, it all costs some money. Like school costs money, boot camps cost a lot of money or you pay your salary, textbooks, books all cost money, online curriculums cost money now. Almost everything, you gotta pay some cash to get it, but this is one thing that's actually just like open source. It's just completely free and that's very rare. First thing I'll ask everyone, we have to appreciate anybody that gives stuff away for free. The people behind Free Code Camp, they put in a lot of work, put in a lot of hours, developed a really nice application and environment and community, and they're just giving it away for people for free. So you have to appreciate that because it's just 0.001% of anything is actually completely free. So that's the number one thing and that's why I think it's a really good resource. So that's the, that gets it the A minus. So free, best part of it. Second thing I wanna talk about that's a really good benefit of free code camp is that it's community driven. So one thing that's all usually lacking when you're trying to learn something online or by yourself is that there is no community that can be built because naturally those things are built easier when things are in real life. So when things are online, you have to kind of make a community. So they have forums, a lot of different contributors, a lot of different uh, people like pushing or contributing their knowledge to Free Code Camp, which gives it a nice community. And it's definitely clear that they emphasize that because you can't understate how important a community is to learn. Being in an environment with your peers who are also learning, that's one of the main benefits of school, I think, because really learning by yourself, just totally siloed by yourself is actually much harder and has has a couple like disadvantages rather than learning in a community. So they focus on community, it's good. Next pro that I wanna talk about that is usually a really good thing and sometimes be a little bit of a bad thing, but first let's talk about why it's good. They put in a lot of work to make their application, Free Code Camp, very interactive for the students. So they have real time, immediate feedback of if your code works, if it doesn't work, how you're doing, the progress you're making, all that stuff. They built the whole environment in the browser for you to give you a very dynamic feeling, which is really nice. So they guide you through all of these things and you're never really lost because they're telling you if your code passed the test or doesn't pass the test. They give you kind of the sample and guidelines step-by-step step of what you need to do. So it's very interactive, very dynamic, and for the complete beginner, that's essential. Last good point I wanna talk about is that there's a lot of supplementary resources to free Code Camp, right? They have a lot of things. They have their website, they got a popular YouTube channel, they got a nice blog post. I read some of their blogs from uh, Quincy, the founder. He's definitely a really smart guy. I can tell just by his writing, but lot of supplementary resources because remember there's a lot of different ways we can learn whether it's video textbook online curriculum whatever it is but there's a lot of different ways to learn and they provide it all for you and aggregate it just take my channel for example like my this is just a youtube channel this is not an optimal place to learn something all i do is i take a bunch of my thoughts i just upload them up here and i guess some people enjoy them but it's very just like a hodgepodge of things one nice thing about Free Code Camp is that they aggregate the resources for you. And there is definitely a lot of value just in grouping it all together. Remember, the number one questions are like, 
uh, what's the best book for that? Uh, where are the links for that? What should I read to do that? But when someone just brings it all together for you, there's already value in that and they're doing it. All right, so those are four really nice things about free CoCam. Let's talk about, I just have two things that could use improvement. Not really bad things, but I think just something to be cautious about and keep on your mind that isn't optimal. So the first thing I wanna talk about is that there's a little too much hand holding with free code camp. And what I mean by hand holding is that they really spoon feed you everything because for the complete beginner, that's okay. But even if you're really new, you should not be spoon fed or handheld all the time. One of the quotes on the website said, they provide the whole environment for you, all the testing stuff, all the setup stuff, so you can just focus on the coding, which is good to a certain extent, but you're coding, right? And around, you're just coding, but around coding, there's a lot of other stuff. There's how to set up your computer, how to set up software, how to actually deploy your application. There's a lot of stuff that surrounds just you know writing lines of code and all the surrounding stuff is equally important. The fact that they kind of abstract that all away from you so you don't have to worry about that is a little dangerous because that's actually stuff you should worry about. The other thing that hand-holding does a little bit is kind of doesn't put you in the engineering mindset. So we've already talked about this a lot. I've talked about it probably a thousand times, but we all have to get really comfortable being uncomfortable, right? The whole essence of engineering and problem solving is that you just get into the dark, you just fall into the dark, you have to crawl your way out of it. If you're handheld too much of the times, so you don't get that environment, you don't get that kind of like sensation instilled into your brain because we have to get really used to just figuring out our way out of darkness, right? And if it's just hand-holding, they tell you exactly what to do, where you're going wrong, then you never really get that feeling. And that feeling is really important. So not really a bad part of it. I mean, Free Code Camp, it is what it is. They know they're a supplementary resource. They're not saying they can replace everything. They fully acknowledge that they're actually a supplementary source. So they're hand-holding you a lot. It's really designed for very, very beginners, but you won't get really that training of being in the dark from the website. So that's my major um, point of feedback. But the next one I have is for organization. This is a very hard thing to do. And when I saw Free Code Camp, they're very ambitious, which is awesome. So if you go to their website, I'll post a link to their website somewhere. But if you look at all the table of contents of what they provide, they provide a ton of stuff. Everything from uh, front end to machine learning, data visualizations, D3, they have Node.js, Express, they have React, they, have, they even have videos on computer systems like networking, um, how a computer works, bits, bytes, all that stuff but they're really ambitious of what they're trying to cram and provide on their platform but it's not very organized this is probably just like a natural growing pain of what they're providing but they pretty much dumped a ton of resources on you but they haven't really told you how you might kind of traverse and like take each resource because the way they present it it's just a straight up huge list that they recommend you follow it step by step the huge list that they've designed but you know, there's so much information, you really can't just blindly go through a huge list like that and have it be really effective. So I think they're trying too much to stuff it with data without thinking hard about what is like the right path for people to take. All they're doing is stuffing resources on you. So when you look at their website, you're gonna see a lot of information and just kind of one singular path to follow, which isn't exactly correct. All in all, I think Free Code Camp is a really good resource. If you haven't checked it out, Again, number one thing is that it's free. They're doing this for you for free and you just, you have to appreciate that. But the next second half of the video, I just wanna talk about some other thoughts I had about teaching and learning that are related to this. And we're gonna start where we left off with this whole organization concept. Your learning is never gonna be straight sequential. So when I think of knowledge, if you just think of knowledge, there's a term knowledge graph, knowledge tree, there's a video I shared a, a long time or a few weeks ago where I showed like this nice roadmap that somebody made where this is nice graph of all the different tech and technologies you can pursue. And it shows you all the different lines that connect them. But if you think of knowledge as a whole, it's more of a graph than like a straight sequential line. It's a graph with many different nodes, many different edges. 
So if knowledge is a graph, the analogy is knowledge is a graph, your learning is your traversal through the graph or how you kind of move around inside the graph. And there's only really two ways you could potentially do this. You could do a breadth, like breadth shallow search of the graph, or you could go deep, like a depth first search, like going really, really, really deep into a category. Those are really the only two ways of traversing the graph, but you will control that traversal. I know this sounds really abstract, but if I could give one piece of abstract advice on how to traverse the knowledge graph is that if you're just starting out, I would always stay shallow because it's really dangerous to get so far deep without staying relatively shallow. So what I like to do is you stay shallow for a while and when you feel really comfortable, you take one and you follow it deep, but then you come back and redo the shallow part again and you follow things deeper, come back up and then go deeper and eventually the shallowness just itself gets deeper and your knowledge of everything grows. But the only thing I would warn against is you go too deep into one part of the graph without knowing other parts. So if you're just starting yet, you get so deep into JavaScript, that might hurt you. The next point I wanna make is about teaching. And teaching, I don't think people really, really give it enough gratitude or understand how difficult teaching is. A lot of the times the students are like, crap I don't I don't get it the teacher must suck but actually teaching thorough teaching like really concrete teaching is extremely difficult I think the reason why it's so difficult is it's kind of like software think about software for one second there's a billion ways to do the same exact thing similarly with teaching there's just a billion ways to do things it's very subjective no two teachers are the same so you have like millions of ways of teaching something and then on the student side you have millions of ways of learning something right and if you're really lucky you'll find this like perfect synergy of teaching and learning but let's be real here you're not going to find it so let's talk a little bit about responsibility like what does that mean like responsibility like is it more the responsibility of the teacher to teach in really really good ways or is it more the responsibility of the student to be able to learn and digest information in different ways and i think the answer to that is largely based on your context so let's just take quick dichotomy first is you're in an establishment and when i say establishment it's like you're in a boot camp you're in a school you're in college you're in some established structure if you're in an established structure i think the responsibility lies on the teachers to be very good at teaching you through very different mediums like teaching you through lectures homework labs office hours all that stuff in an establishment the teachers have to accommodate the students now let's take it to the other side of the spectrum and do no establishment what if you're not a part of any establishment and you're just trying to learn on your own or self-directed but if this is the case then the responsibility lies on you to be a good student because when you're doing it by yourself you can't change how someone is teaching you right because you're not controlling that you're not a part of any establishment so when you're on your own the responsibility is on you to have a flexible mind to digest different types of information you have to be able to read a book by yourself do an online course by yourself maybe take classes by yourself but when you're on your own that responsibility is on you not the establishment because there is no establishment next kind of idea i had was this concept of this trio of things so what is this trio but hear me out first it's platform second is method and third is categories and this is kind of like the trio of learning let's talk about it a little more the platform is kind of like where are you when you're learning is it online self-study in an establishment in a classroom or whatever else it's the platform the methods are kind of like the medium or like how you're going about this learning so four different methods i brainstormed were theory lessons labs or projects and this is really like what is the method of you learning theory could be just reading a book reading a huge book lessons is like lecture notes downloading lecture notes having some kind of flow and thought process through one unit like one lesson labs could be like first hands-on slightly directed but hands-on exercise of applying some of the theory you learn and then finally projects are like undirected independent type of work so those are different methods and everyone's going to like different methods equally but you can't always stick to one remember you can't only do theory without labs you can't only do 
project work without understanding theory. So those are all methods and each method is paired with a specific platform, right? You could do self-study platform and do some labs or you could do a classroom project. And finally, the last part of the trio is just the easiest part. This is just categories. And categories is the core thing you want to learn, like the language, the framework, the computers, you want to learn about networking, you want to learn about compilers. What is it, the core thing you want to learn? But forever, for whatever you want to learn, you have those three kind of trio of options to choose from. If you're still here, I think I'm getting a little bit crazy. I'm going a little bit off the script and just talking, but this trio thing, one last thing about this trio thing, platform methods and categories, but everything, this is obviously very personal. Like that's a personal thing. Like you choosing how you learn, what platform you learn best and what you actually want to learn, that's all you. So when I get a lot, I get a lot of questions in the comments of like, what's the best book for this? How should I learn how to program? How do I learn Python? Like, how do I do this? Like, I don't answer a lot of those questions, not because I'm not feeling like answering, but I really don't want to answer those questions because that's all personal for you and I don't want to give you what works for me because that might not work for you. So all those questions like how do I learn, that in, in itself is something that you have to find out for yourself because it's very personalized. Like how you learn is going to be totally specialized to you and not for anyone else. So just the fact that you have to ask people to determine how you learn shows that you haven't put enough effort in trying to learn because there's kind of like a subtle art form in like finding what clicks best for you. And maybe this trio could help you if you wanna just take this and break it down, break it down by all the platforms that you like. You don't like online, but you like school or you like school and you like online too. And then once you have the platforms you like, think about the methods that you like. Do you like theory stuff? Do you like lesson stuff more? Do you like more independent? Do you like handheld? But everyone, likes different types of methods. And finally, categories. Obviously, categories is totally up to you. You can learn whatever you want, but at the end of the day, you are picking. So when you ask other people like me or anyone ask, no one can give you a really good answer of how you should do it. So stop asking. And if you ask and somebody gives you an answer, you always take it with a grain of salt because it might not work for you. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Did a, enough bullshitting here, but the main purpose of the video is to talk about free code camp. Again, summarize amazing resource because it's free. They've done a lot of work to build a community, aggregate information for you. Uh, it's interactive. The only thing I would be careful against is that don't be handheld too much. You got to figure out a lot of this stuff out for yourself. Free code camp is doing a lot of the scaffolding and the lead work for you, but be careful because you got to do that stuff as well. And finally, when you go to their website, it's a lot of information. It's going to be a dump, a dump of stuff on you and it's not very organized. So the way you organize it, the way you organize your learning or your traversal through the knowledge graph, that's totally up to you. And my recommendation for that is breadth first and then depth and then breadth and then depth. So that's all I have to say. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me a comment, like, uh, click the thumbs up, all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time. All right, guys, take care.